three, two, one. Boosh. Oh my God, that's cold. Yep. Hello. Oh, welcome back to You Betcha Radio Podcast, the coldest podcast in all the Midwest, presented by Ice Mountain. Ryan, we're live here in the Troy Escalade yep. Jackson Podcast Pod- Memorial Podcast Studio. Ryan, how you feeling, buddy? Feeling great. I'm feeling Monday, good too. Baby. We're doing this on a Monday. Yeah, look, look at, at us. us. Monday, Monday. We got a case of the Mondays today. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, how about that weekend? Am I right? Yeah. The- uh, yeah uh, yesterday, I had a bit of the case of the Sunday scaries. <laughs> today, I got a case of the Mondays. Hey. Probably tomorrow, I'll have a case of the Tuesdays. Hey, last Monday of the week. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, I heard that one last week, actually. <laughs> on Monday. So, in reality, though, when this comes out, hump day, baby. Hump day. Over the hump. <laughs> last Wednesday of the week. Last Wednesday of the week. Make it a good one. Yeah. Here we go. Look at us. New year, new us. Mm-hmm. Positive vibes. Tyler, hey. resident positive guy. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you guys? Good. We're just making the most out of every single day that we have here. That's good. It's good. You never know how many you have left, well, so you might is, as well. Uh, you're right. This is the last Wednesday of the week, so I better <laughs> make the most of it. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I wish I said that myself, Damn but it. I didn't. <laughs> What's the date when this comes out? Uh, 25th. Last 25th of the month. <laughs> <laughs> last January 25th of the year. <laughs> make it a good one. <laughs> last January 25th, 2023 of the world. Actually, the universe la- last ever one dash twenty three of two thousand twenty three. Yeah, or one twenty five. Sorry, today's the twenty third. So <laughs> last January of the year. Just think about that. There'll never be this date ever again. Yeah. Oh, till time travel. Yeah, that's deep. Fuck. I want everyone to just sit and think about how <laughs> we'll just never have this moment here right now ever again. Also, if you think about it, right now at this moment is the youngest that you'll ever be. But it's also the Again. oldest I've ever been. Correct. <laughs> wow. That's fucking deep. I am so That's deep. Right unnecessarily now. deep. Anyways, we got a good episode, I think, coming ahead of you guys. Yeah. Uh our last Patreon episode was pretty solid too. Mm-hmm. Really good. Rock solid. I did oh yeah. Well, Patreon, we talked about it. was po- it was a lot more informational than this week yeah, than I mean, ever before. Huge piece of information regarding hangovers. Yes. You have oh, to go listen yeah. to it. Like, and this is this is actually the most practical piece of info that we've given. Yeah, and it was right off the bat. There was yeah. no, no Googling needed. It was just correct. Yeah. No, I, and we think still. We no, I, you're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Okay. So if you guys want some good hangover information, you got to go over to patreon.com slash bitch radio. Check it out because we spit some fire. Yep. Anyways... Jared, what do we got going on today? All right. Uh, what's something you learned embarrassing late in life? What is something that I learned embarrassing late in life? Embarrassing Lee. I thought about yeah. this, Jared. <laughs> embarrassingly late. Yeah. What What did I say? Jared said embarrassing late. Oh. It's embarrassingly hey. late in life. Case of the Mondays, am I <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. Last one of the week. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like Gord. <laughs> Gord. <laughs> Um, something that I learned embarrassingly late in life is that on the shampoo bottle, it says tears instead of tears. Yeah. 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 That was. Wait, what? Yeah. You'd see, it would say tear free, but you think it's tear free and you just got it in your fucking eyes (laughs) and it burns like a bitch. I remember as a kid, (laughs) like I didn't like openly put the soap in my eye, (laughs) but I remember washing my hair with the tear free, aka the tear free, and just letting it roll down my forehead, and then just like getting to my eyes and just blinking a ton and being like, uh, I, uh, "This is not tear free. What the hell?" Still burns. So, because they don't they promote 
tear free on like kids shampoo. No, it's tear. It's, it's tear. tear. I know. Dude, I, I thought know. for the longest time that I, and I this is not this you, is for you're real. just learning this now. Correct. Yeah. This because is embarrassingly late for you to be learning this. I know because now I have a kid. I, I assume that for kids it would be tear free. Ryan's because- just gonna be squirting soap <laughs> in his kid's eye. Well, I remember being as a, a kid and seeing bottles of shampoo that didn't say tear free, and I was scared to use them. Yeah, because like, oh, what if I get this in my eye? My fucking eyes oh, burn. I'm be crying for weeks, and last thing I need is be crying. That's not very. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you if know. you're gonna cry, you might as well do it in the shower so no one can see your yeah, tears. Well, sure. no, little do we know that you know most of my life I've been crying in the shower anyway, <laughs> so I didn't need tear-free <laughs> shampoo. I was already doing that myself. Yeah, so, so crying. Okay, so tear-free is because the bottle cannot tear, or no, your, <laughs> it's for your hair. It's protecting your hair, like making it stronger. <laughs> well, because your hair tears. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I've never heard of hair tearing. Hair tears. And then you well, get like, like it's sp- damaged. split well, ends I split, and shit. Okay, yeah. split ends make sense. That makes sense. Yeah, but okay. hair could get damaged in the middle of it and rip I'm out. I'm not saying that the shampoo industry had it nailed like, oh, wow. Yeah, they should be putting tear free on every bottle. I'm not saying that was smart, but we kind of looked dumb for not knowing it was tear instead of tear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's because it's like, well, yeah. Yep. You just I was, learned I was, that. You yeah, just yeah. learned that. And how does it feel? Well, you were gonna let that soap run in your kid's eye. Weren't you? <laughs> what? What? What's the? How many times has he had soap in his eye, and you've just been like, once. "Not a problem." Once. This is tear free, out, honey. Yeah, I freak out. They don't yeah. know what to do. Um, you guys remember the shampoo bottles and like the little fish? Like mm-hmm. it was shaped as a fish. That's exactly L'Oreal. L'Oreal. That's I'm. Th- that's exactly what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of tear free. Because all those it's you know tear, flashy it's commercial tear free. Tear free. <laughs> so, I mean, just like uh, interpret it how you want, if you will. Sure. <laughs> Until sure. you're squirting it in your eyes. Yeah. If you just had a major breakup, <laughs> maybe just throw some shampoo in your eyes. It's gonna hurt, but later in the day, no tears running for mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Guys, as you know, we are presented by Ice Mountain. We love Ice Mountain. Tastes oh so crisp. <laughs> Ooh, God, that's watery. So wet. So wet. It's the wettest water. Could be the wettest, in all the yeah. Midwest. Mm-hmm. Um, not going to lie. Feels good after a long weekend to be rehydrating with Ice Mountain. Did some Bush Mountains this weekend. You do some Ice Mountains on Monday. When you say you got a case of the Mondays, it really means you got a case of Ice Mountain sitting there. Mm-hmm. Is really what it's all about. And uh, what's cool about Ice Mountain is they like do stuff in the community as well. So right now they actually have what is the ice runs deep campaign going on where you can nominate a uh, right now they're doing it in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So you can nominate a Michigan high school team um, and they'll like sponsor it and like give them a bunch of yeah, you get like water, and- ice mountain jerseys and water and bragging rights. And can you nominate the Michigan Panthers? They are not, not a, a hockey team. Oh, or, oh, hockey. or high school. Did sure. I not say it was hockey? <laughs> you did. So Ryan's not listening. At all. <laughs> you must be a little dehydrated. Why don't you uh, I've been take sipping. a sip? I'm Why don't you sipping. take a sip and uh, get with the program here? Because <laughs> the program is great for these high school uh, hockey teams. So uh, how you do it is fans can nominate their team. It's a team of the week. So like every week they're doing this. You can nominate a team of the week. For bragging rights, but also the chance to win a limited edition Ice Mountain hockey jersey, you can find out, find it at your local ice rink. Find us at your local ice rink, and you can submit online at icerunsdeep.com. Makes I'm such a bad reader. <laughs> that's why I don't. That's why yeah. I don't read ad reads. Yeah. I'm because I'm so slow at reading. Um, it was beautifully done. My brain can't make the connections. Um, but yeah, if you want another reason to love Ice Mountain, other than the fact that all the water comes from a glacier spring that was formed <laughs> because of an absurdly cataclysmic event that happened roughly eight to 12,000 years ago that ended the Ice Age. Formed, and rose sea levels 400 feet across the globe. Formed the craters that made the Great Lakes. Exactly. Well, 
They don't think it hit there, but I don't think the meteor hit the Great Lakes. <laughs> but you're really close in the grand scheme of things. So if you want some of this cataclysmic water, what? It says it on the sheet that it formed the Great Lakes. Oh, well, it didn't make a crater. It's just the water melted and filled up the low parts. Anyways. It says carved the Great Lakes. Yeah, the water. <laughs> the meteor didn't. Anyways, if you want some cataclysmic <laughs> water, you got to pick up an ice mountain. <laughs> Tyler. Ice mountain. Ooh, that's wet. Mm -hmm. so. Um, Ryan as a kid, or Tyler as a kid was like, <laughs> well, you don't have contacts, do you? No. I was going to say. No, 2010 vision. Tyler runs out of contact solution. He's like, Fuck. Yeah. Well, I'll just use the tear free stuff <laughs> to lube up the things as they go in. And he's like, he's got his like the thing where he's like pulling his eyelid back, squirting shit. I, I, don't, I don't think you know how contacts work. <laughs> You've never had contacts, have you? Oh, I, yeah, I, I can see perfectly fine. Yeah, you I, don't need to lube up contacts. Yeah, you like, can sit in the solution. The solution. Yeah, but. You use water. Yeah, sometimes you want to pre-lube it. <laughs> <laughs> and when am I just going to run out of water, but I have a bottle of shampoo You can handy. use water. Yeah, you can. No, it'll dry them out. You can use a little bit. You can use water. Coming from contact wearers, you can. <laughs> Literally, I've never worn contacts <laughs> I mean, in my life. 2010. That recommend? I've never even looked at contacts. No. Hey. Uh, yeah. Oh, my there? gosh. Do you guys think that's weird? What? That every single day you see the world through a lens. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> yeah, I was telling Becca that like I haven't seen something clear that wasn't through something else in fifteen years. Same. That sucks, dude. You gotta like that, you gotta get that surgery. What I, are you gonna do if there's hey. an apocalypse and you can't just get your? That's your, what I think too. Two more. Yeah, I know. I've thought about this a million times. It runs through my head. Like if there's an apocalypse, I have three pairs of glasses. I have them ready to go. Um. Yeah. Get the surgery. What's that called again? LASIK. LASIK. Two more appointments, uh, and I can get it. No, like, but what you need to do is you need to have a kid, and then meet your deductible, and then get LASIK for free. Mm, okay. Oh. So okay. well, we know he's gonna have it <laughs> soon <laughs> enough. So Could great, happen. Be happening now. Great yeah. plan, actually. Um. So yeah. Ultimately, I must have been twenty five years old, twenty four years old, and I realized that it said. <laughs> Hair <laughs> instead of tear. I'm gonna have to look at my shampoo bottle. I I got some Tresemme right now. I've been working on for a while. The f f pump bottle. How's it going? Oh yeah, that was such a good uh -huh. sound effect. The f f <laughs> pump bottle. Um, yeah, I'll have to take a look at that when I get home. But but what was dumb is it like the reason part of the reason why I thought it was tears is because it was only on children's soap yes yeah and so exactly. it's like so it's like because they're like oh adults aren't dumb enough to get this stuff in their eye you know we just like go like that but kids they're just gonna let it run in their eye yeah, so of course know. they would make it tear free so that you don't even have to worry about that because they're just dumb kids do you think they did it on purpose because they knew we would misinterpret it and they're like this matters to kids adults don't care yeah i don't know but I've Either been, way, I was bamboozled. <laughs> I've been buying tier free, thinking that it's tier free. So yeah, they got me there. They threw an extra dollar on it to avoid those tears. Yep. And also, then it, it can't a, be false advertising if they meant tears. Let's do a lawsuit. Yeah. Let's get uh, what's well, called the action. litigator. Yeah. It's called the litigator. Are you the litigator? Class action yeah. lawsuit. <laughs> Don't tell everyone my alter ego. <laughs> Unmasked him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you took my my glasses off and you realized I was Superman, you know? Never wore glasses before, but now I put does. glasses on to be the litigator, yeah. actually, is what happens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when I transform into the litigator, my vision actually worsens <laughs> instead of gets better. It's like the opposite of superheroes or like Power Rangers, you know? <laughs> And we're going to bring a class action lawsuit to L'Oreal and say, <laughs> Just I bought so much shampoo because I thought it was tear free. Who, who do you, but this gonna, but the problem is, is when it's written down, they're going to be like, what do you mean? It is tear free. Cause they're going to see the word tear. <laughs> yeah. And we're pronouncing it tear and they're pronouncing it tear. And this lawsuit's going to be a mess. And then we all show up in the courtroom and we say tear. And then L'Oreal's going to be like, Oh, 
Oh, yeah. that's what you meant. Yeah. Well, Your Honor, we need to go pre- prepare something way different. <laughs> what do you think Laurie's last name is? Ellingson. Laurie L. Laurie Larvidson. L O R I E L L E. Laurie L. <laughs> Friends with Carrie Oakey and at ease. Up and Adam <laughs> and at ease. At uh, ease. The other ones we kind of made names. At ease are just like fuck it. That was <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that, that was mine. Lori Anyways, L. All I know is Lori L. Better be watching her back for a class yeah. action lawsuit from may, the litigator. May not be a good good gal. I think I I don't think they meant it, meant anything malicious. But I kind of think Jared, they what do. are you looking up right now? Just who the founder of L'Oreal? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, we already know it's Lori. Right. <laughs> Anyways, um, you guys have one that was embarrassing. Lately? Yeah, yeah. I, I, go ahead, yeah, Ryan. It, go ahead, Tyler. I'll go. Um, no, Ryan, why don't you go ahead? All right, Jared, you should go. Something that I learned embarrassingly late in life was the optimal tire pressure for your tires is just on the side of your tires. So there's no guessing oh, game yeah. that goes into it. The optimal amount of PSI to put in your tires is just like on the fine print on the side of your yeah, tire. It's literally like raised on your tire. Yes, you can I, read it. Yeah. For, for the yeah. longest time for me, absolute shot in the dark. Um, I'll look at another one. Yeah, that one looks good. And that one's at uh, 32. Okay. It just must be 32 PSI then. Mm-hmm. I never, this is probably three years ago. Okay. That is embarrassing. Mm. Late. <laughs> I think I learned this at the appropriate time. Yeah, I learned it like from what I remember. I learned it like late. I didn't learn it right away when I turned sixteen and started driving. It was probably like seventeen or eighteen. I Which this. I think is not embarrassingly late. Okay. I think that that is just the appropriate time. Appro- appropriately. <laughs> but you late. you did it. You had it happen when you were twenty six years old. Probably yeah, probably twenty five, twenty six. I would say it's moderately embarrassingly late. <laughs> sure, not uh, not fully embarrassing. Not a full embarrassingly. Yeah, and. I think a lot of the time it was just too dirty to even, I thought it was a fine print of the tire, you know? <laughs> like, I all I know is that, you know, I got a Firestone tire, I got, you know, you Michelin, the, whatever. You thought the terms and conditions were on there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got to cover their ass somehow. Yeah. It does look like it could be, like, the the size of the tire, you know? Yeah, and when my dad showed me, he just licked his thumb and, like, rubbed off the dirt, and that, there it was right there. That's such a dad 30, move, like I love 30, that. 42 PSI or whatever. I'm running these puppies low. For years, you can just no matter what though. It's just really hard to get your PSI to a hundred percent. I bounce around eighty five, ninety. Um, um, you do have a low. I drove Tyler's truck the other day. Tyler needs to do the old lick the thumb and check the PSI because one of his back right was a little low. Back right's low. There's a screw in it. Got a patch kit. Been getting to it. I could just oh. feel because it was it was a little loose in the back corner <laughs> as I was as I was drifting around the corner. Still, I could just feel it was a little splishy, splishy, splashy on that tire, and I didn't like it. There, there it wasn't a computer screen yelling at you that the tire was low. I, there was no, there was the computer screen was off. If mm. I think, I was like, "Where is this guy's dashboard?" <laughs> so then I just had to go off a of feel, which I can do, and I just felt it a little splishy, splashy in the. You know, in the hard left corners. <laughs> so back left right. corners. Well, no. If you take a left, it's all the weights on the okay. back right. So see, you're clearly I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you're gonna patch this yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. really easy to patch it. It patch. It's actually kind of fun. Yeah. It's a, are you gonna use the little like uh, like the little tool where you stick the yep. sticky thing in and then you jam it in there. Mm-hmm. Because it's like 30 bucks to get it done at like a tire set. Yeah, it's $8 for a tire patch. It's got a point. Are you, are and and you... Becca just got hers replaced, <laughs> and I was like, hey, pick me up a patch. So we're getting two tires repaired for the price of one. Well, the fun okay, part that's is fair. the fun yeah. part. That's fair. Fun part of changing it. The fun part of changing a tire is not. No, sorry. Not Jay. The fun part about patching a tire is unless it has a screw in it mm-hmm. or a nail or something is just finding where the leak is. Yeah. You know, you just got to spray it with some water soap. or soap or whatever. Look at it. Soap, and yeah. then you spin it and then you see it again. It's like, it's like a fun little treasure hunt. Here, I have a life, a life tip for everybody. If you don't own an air compressor, wow. patch your tire at the gas station. Cause there's an air compressor for you right there. 
You don't have to borrow one from a buddy. You don't have to limp it over to holiday to get their tire, their, their air pressure, which is their air tank, whatever the fuck it's called. Just do it there and you're good to go. Smart. Well, I mean, if it's freezing cold out though, there's no, you're not going to catch it, me It outside. literally takes no time at all. What do you use to pull the nail or screw out? Just a, a pliers drill? or what? It's teeth. Yeah, I'm, you can get it out. If it's a screw, you can get it oh, out yeah, with a drill. Get, yeah. Or if it's a nail, use a hammer. Huh. Do you plan on replacing the tire ever? No, it's a lease. Lease is almost up. They can have it back. <laughs> they're gonna Ooh. induct you for that. They're not gonna notice sure. the. They're not gonna notice the patch. It's airtight. You spray paint it black when you're hey, done. Hey, you gotta no, do it. Black. Where you roll Patches up? Patches match the tire. You gotta roll up to the thing and have Becca get out and then tell you when the patch is on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so they come and inspect the vehicle and they won't see it. Yeah, that, that's actually a great move. That's a great move. How, how they're not gonna know any mm-hmm. otherwise. They're not going to pay attention to that shit. They might. I don't know, though. They love scamming people out of money. <laughs> yeah, they love they tricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like landlords of of like these shitty apartments. Just if you think you're getting a deposit back, you're dreaming. <laughs> you could give it back to them in better condition. They're like, well, actually, <laughs> well, you wear see, and tear on the microwave is six thousand dollars. Well, you see, we didn't want it to be this nice because now we have to charge more. And so we're going to have to. <laughs> Pay to tear out all the improvements that you did. It's also a five hundred dollar fee for us to change the price of the listing online. So. Yeah, so uh, now we got to pay more in taxes because we made more money on it. So here, no deposit for you. That's property that, management company. That's what they sound like that's too. The worst. What's the most you guys ever gotten back on your deposit, like renting? Full. Oh really? Yeah. It depends on what you got to rent from good renters. Yeah. Yeah. I've rented some from some big companies before, and they're the fucking scumbags. Yeah, I don't. I've never gotten the full before, but it's been close. A couple hundred bucks off of like a, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred dollar deposit. Gotcha. My college house, we fucked up, and they only charged us like a hundred bucks. And then I went the next house when I went in with my family, and we left it perfectly fine, and I got charged like four hundred dollars for like random shit. You know, classic. Not what you know, it's who you know. Yep. <laughs> Didn't didn't take care of the yard. Yeah, they didn't charge me for the yard. They charged me for all the tiny nail holes from Becca hanging up decorations. Mm. Well, pro- oh. That was probably just spackled them. I was you, probably- we weren't allowed to. They said if you filled the holes, we'll charge you more. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck off!" Fuck. <laughs> they Had probably yeah. there's probably baby shit everywhere. There was it <laughs> drool and <laughs> probably a lot of dog hair though. Yeah, but we had to get the carpets clean before we moved out, so it doesn't matter. Oh, I stopped once. Once I realized that I was going to get charged, anyways, I stopped doing any of that shit. <laughs> Just said you deal with it. Well, yeah. we had to show them a receipt. Yeah, yeah, we had to do that a lot. Like time. we couldn't, like we have a shampooer, we couldn't do it ourselves and be like, "Here you go, here's a fucking video." Well, if you guys had any sort of wherewithal, you could have just forged it. Oh yeah, yeah. Will you yeah. forge it for me next you time? You could just go on Uline, buy the fake little receipt books, and you could have just made one up. Mm. Pro tip. That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> no, at not at all. <laughs> Uline's got to cost, what, eight bucks? Yeah. When you, and next day shipping. Too. And then you know what I can do? I can just start selling fake receipts to people time, leaving okay. their houses. Time out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, team up with Cleveland Steamer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's no, you just make house. about 20 bucks on each one, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So you... The, you charge them like 30 bucks, you know, and you just say, hey, I'll get you a fake. I charge them. I'll charge them 100 bucks, say I'll vacuum and then write you a receipt for a shampooing. Mm. Also, did anyone else miss the fact that Tyler said he had a shampooer? Yeah, well, it's not mine. It's back. I have a, we have a shampooer as well. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, carpet shampooer. Carpet shampooers are elite. We have a light colored couch and so mm-hmm. shampoo top. Yeah, is yeah. it one of those fucking green egg things? <laughs> no. Yeah, the- time out. Does the stuff you put in this carpet shampoo or is it no tears or no tears? <laughs> I'll check for you tonight. I'll shit my pants if it says something about it on there. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like looks like a laundry detergent I, bottle. I, yeah. I'm learning this embarrassingly late in life <laughs> that people buy carpet shampoos. I thought that was like something you only rented or paid someone to come in and do. Well, you also you don't have a dog or a kid, so you're like you're good. Yeah, that's that's a. Fair I also point. don't have that much carpet in my house. I have yeah. a lot more of like the vinyl stuff. Dude, oh, back of shampoos, the fucking carpets. No pun intended. Mm-hmm. Um, at least once a month. <laughs> that's it? all. 
<laughs> yeah. God, you're gonna want to. Those are rookie numbers. You're gonna want to bump those up. Well, she's afraid of the tears. It's not tear free. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! Nothing's tear free with me around. So, <laughs> so what you're saying? Oh flex. my god! The carpet I wear yeah, shoes. In, flex, I wear shoes okay. inside. <laughs> so you're saying the carpet matches the drapes every once in a while. Yeah, sometimes you're on the carpet cleaner over your pubes. <laughs> Feels good. Wait, what? <laughs> well, the carpet matching the drapes joke, and yeah, I just, you know. <laughs> uh, I It's like a, a spa day for your undercarriage. <laughs> Run the ca- carpet cleaner over top. Feels good. <laughs> so there's more than one benefit to buying a carpet cleaner. I didn't. I I'm embarrassed. I'm learning this embarrassingly late. I didn't know. Uh, Becca sent me a picture of the shampoo bottle, so I'm gonna look for tears here, okay. quick. Well, <laughs> if you're looking for tears, you might miss the tears. No, it's not tear free. <laughs> Is that what it says? Yeah, it, it doesn't say that, uh, but it, I don't see tear free anywhere. Must not be a kid's carpet shampoo then. No. <laughs> I will say though, the carpet. The you know carpet- what? Actually, that's gonna be my first when I have a kid. To me, my first little tykes set for him is going to be a carpet shampoo <laughs> set. It's me like you know you can get the Look lawnmowers at, for little kids yeah. that have like the little pop balls. I'm going to get him a carpet shampoo or toy. Well, because then they learn to clean up after themselves. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I don't want I want them to learn way earlier than I did. This is embarrassing for me. I don't want them to have an embarrassingly late moment of learning that people buy carpet shampoo or. <laughs> Vacuums, carpet, Cleaner? shampoo, shampoo, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just didn't know that, that was that common. I thought it was like a. I didn't know. I bet your mom it, has one. Text her. I bet she has one. I moms I'm gonna, love this. Shit. I'm gonna say I don't think she does, but I'll text her. It is wild how dirty the water she's is. Gonna, after you- she's gonna think I like puked on the got drunk and puked on the carpet or something. <laughs> yeah. Don't say anything about borrowing it. Just say, hey, no. do you own a carpet cleaner? Exclamation mark, question mark. Yeah. <laughs> they are like, I mean, point. they could even offer like right. a college course on how to run carpet cleaners. There's a bunch of different solutions you gotta mm-hmm. put in them. The on and off button is not like a shot back where it's just, I, from what I know, I've only used it once, maybe twice. Yeah, I've never turned the fucking thing on once myself, ever. It sounds good when it turns on, though. Yeah. It sounds like, man, that baby's getting clean. He's humming. Hum diggity dog. <laughs> uh, I got one. I learned embarrassingly late in life that the weatherman on the news is not just standing in front of a big-ass TV. It's a green screen. Mm, that is, like... Like... Once you started working at the news? Right before that, like college. I'm sure. glad that you learned that before you went to the news. You show up like, what What the fuck? You walk in, you're like, no shit. Yeah. You like look behind it. Yeah. Oh, this, is this just the cover for the big TV? <laughs> I just don't know why that never clicked. And I remember at times been thinking like, that picture is really like clear. Like, why is there no glare? There's nothing. This, this dude's just sitting here fine. Yeah. He's never wearing green. Yeah. <laughs> Did what? you... Did you, you know, I'm not saying this is a dig. I'm wondering, because when I was young, I had the the wherewithal mm-hmm. to go, well, why is this fucking guy constantly looking off screen? And that's how I was able to figure it out. You never thought of why no. is the weatherman always looking off screen? Not once. I. It still blows my mind how he knows where to point when he's not well, looking he's off looking screen. He's looking at a TV. Yeah, there's like two TVs. So he oh, can see but it, himself. But it's, it's reflected, though, correct? No, they they flip it, so it's it's matching his hand movement. It's, not like, it's not like a mirror. I've seen it live now. I know all about it now. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes way more sense than what I was thinking. Yeah. That is embarrassing yep. a little bit. <laughs> yep. I'll give you that. How big did you think this fucking TV was? Really fucking big. <laughs> I mean... My God, I need one of those bad. And... It, and <laughs> Like they don't make TVs that big. One, two. If it was a projector, you would see his. I know. I know. That's I shadow <laughs> yeah, thing. True. The shadow true. thing is why I didn't think that it was. A, I thought it was a TV. That'd be funny if they just did a projector and like the whole time just the thing <laughs> over his face, <laughs> <laughs> just the light over over his face. <laughs> now to piggyback off the weather talk, this is I wasn't on my list, but something I learned embarrassingly embarrassingly late in life was. When the weatherman says 
35% chance of rain, that means 35% of that area is going to get rain. Yep. Like yep. it yep. is going to get rain. It's not like 35 out of 100 ah. chance. Chance. I had the same thing. I think it was like a TikTok. Yeah, yeah. That this, taught me. So yeah. I would say. We, so we all learned this like a year or two ago, right? So if no that's longer the than case, that. yeah. when did you learn it, Jared? I learned. I knew it in college. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna go on the limb and say this isn't that embarrassing. I don't think we're alone. Yeah. So will you explain that again, Ryan? Explain it so that everyone knows what we're talking about. Okay. So when the weatherman says there's a 35 percent chance of rain. It means that 35% of that area is 100% going to have rain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's just a 35% chance out of 100 that it's going to rain in, in yeah, Fargo. So if so, it's right? a 100 square mile area he's predicting, 35 square miles of that area will be getting rained on. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and I learned that recently, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean... But they don't teach you any of that shit. Well, I feel no. like they should because it's like we've been confused for 20 plus years thinking like, how is it 35 percent chance rate? It's either fucking raining or it isn't. Yeah. It's fucking yeah. torn right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like 100 percent chance of rain to me. <laughs> or like if you have something going on outside that day, you're like, ah, 35 percent. That ain't bad. Yeah. Like, it, it probably won't even rain. It might just drizzle. <laughs> no, yeah. it's it's downpouring. There's a 65 percent chance it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> the weatherman fucking wrong again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that where that comes from? <laughs> hey, the baby boomers have no idea about this. They still haven't learned it, and that's why they're always mad at the yeah. weather man yes yeah. that's where that's where the frustrations came from baby boomers not knowing that mm -hmm. but how would they have learned they didn't grow up with tiktok they <laughs> no. don't have that oh. shit no no not. unless they're talking to a weather man which you don't get to often. that'd be great if we actually the person on tiktok was wrong and we just we all got yeah we just flip flopped <laughs> yeah well i mean jared yeah. knew that when he was in fucking elementary school so <laughs> it's a college so oh, okay. when you <laughs> when you were still sucking on the teat when you learned this <laughs> how did you find this out I think I don't remember. I think it was it's just because you were that young. You don't have memories from that age anymore. It was probably during like we we had to do college news and right. we'd have people come in and critique. And sometimes it was weather people. I don't. Yeah, I honestly don't remember how I knew that. I remember looking it up and everything. I was like, no fucking way. It turns out it was true. You're mind blown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think you would remember that, Jared? I mean, it's up there with like, where were you? You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, I honestly don't remember, but my my mind was blown when I found out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one, actually, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, it, you're yeah. Not, you spurred it though, Tyler. It's a good one, but I don't think you need to be embarrassed. No, don't yeah. be embarrassed. You shouldn't. Be I mean, it makes total sense though. Okay, yeah. To piggyback, ooh, double piggy. Because <laughs> there's porking around. <laughs> <laughs> to piggyback off of watching a TikTok that informed you of that, I learned embarrassingly late in life how a microwave actually works. Uh, I'm about to be in the same boat because I don't fucking know. I so, don't either. I always thought, right, it was like this thing is shooting like these these x-rays into the food and somehow is heating Mi up. Microwaves. It was shooting microwaves. <laughs> yeah into the food and it was heating the food mm -hmm. but if you think about it the bowl some bowls don't get hot yeah. in the microwave just the food does so why on earth would the food if it was just sending weight it would all get hot mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. well it's because microwaves only heat up water water so if your food has a lot of water in it, it'll heat up the bowl. But if all of the water it, it, or it has a little amount of water, it'll only heat up the food. So it just vibrates the water molecules and heats up the water, which heats up the food. So if you think about it, if you throw like a if you throw a pitcher of water in the microwave for two minutes, and then you throw like a steak dinner in the microwave for two two minutes. The water is exponentially hotter. It's hot than and the, steak and the like actual yes. thing is hot. Yes. But the plate that the steak is on is not hot. Correct. Mm -hmm. Weird. All, all microwaves do is heat up water. So what would happen if we threw into the microwave like dehydrated powder or something that has no water in it whatsoever? It's dehydrated well, on purpose. Well, there's perfect. probably a little bit of water still left in it, don't you think? Because it only gets dehydrated a certain <laughs> amount, right? Uh, 
this is like, I shit you not. This is like three weeks ago. I turned the microwave on. <laughs> And then I opened it up really quick and threw my hand in to see if it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't at all. I'm like, what the fuck is this doing that? It's funny you bring that up. I fuck shit you know. <laughs> <laughs> It was like three weeks ago. And I'm like, I, I, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> hand straight in. It's not even hot. <laughs> so where's the heat coming from? Yeah. Well, now you know. I didn't know. <laughs> Apparently, I was dehydrated. But he tried to catch the yeah. heat in a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> You're challenging the That's such a that Ryan thing to do, yeah. too. I can just picture too. Did you do? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Not hot. I'm what like, the fuck? Am I just not quick enough, or was, am I just getting old? Am I losing my my quick twitch yeah. muscles? Yeah, you're losing your fastball. Yeah. Yeah. You're yep. like Meg. Where's the receipt for the microwave? I got <laughs> not hot. Yeah. Not That's hot. a good experiment, though. Yeah. If something is 100, I mean, okay. But what if you put like, but if you just put, because if you just put like a paper plate in the microwave, it wouldn't get hot. No. Would it burn though? Because like, nope. You can burn shit in the microwave. Yeah, that's like metals and shit. No, but like if you were to put in like a piece of cheese in the microwave for too long, it would eventually burn. It would get Well, there's crispy. a lot of moisture yeah. in cheese. I one time I uh was reheating a Chick-fil-A sandwich and I didn't like I just didn't even think that there was foil wrapped around it, right? Mm. I just thought it was like a fucking oh, yeah, yeah. like, you know, you throw a McDonald's <laughs> burger in there and started it's not sparking up on Yeah, it started sparking up. Yeah. And now I got a permanent like like spark mark on my microwave. <laughs> spark <laughs> mark. It won't bu- it won't buff out either. I've done that before like I reheating a bowl or something, you forget the spoon in there and all of a sudden your <laughs> microwave just starts popping oh, off. Yeah, yeah um, there's a lot of moisture in spoons. <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with metal? <laughs> what's the deal with metal? Um <laughs> No, I think that a regular segment on this podcast going forward should be Ryan's microwave haptics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just, hey, Ryan, tell us, what, what do you got going on with your microwave these days? Okay, here's another one I'll tell you right now. <laughs> so the time on my microwave is like, you know, if you turned the, like, the, sc- the screen light on your phone all the way down, in like super light, you can't see anything, right? That's basically what the time on my microwave looks like. So whenever I am checking to see how much time is left, I literally have to like <laughs> throw my hands around it like something's trying to glow in the dark and see how much time is left. And I don't know how to fix that. And okay, here we go. You have the knowledge to fix it because it's in a booklet <laughs> that, that has guess. all of the instructions for the microwave on. But you don't remember where you put it in yeah. the house. It's probably in no, the junk it was, drawer. It was, no, it was Somewhere. the microwave was there when we bought the house. I don't know uh, where they put that. But no one ever throws the appliance stuff away. Mm-hmm. It always goes somewhere in the house, and then you never see it again. Mm-hmm. Oh, can I tell you what? I almost think it sometimes just absorbs into cabinets <laughs> after a certain amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the instructions for the appliances just absorb into the cabinets. Laundry room cupboard's another good spot for them. Um, Did you now, check there? I, not yet. Tonight I will. Another <laughs> thing too, dishwasher is like falling out of like its place. So if the doors open and both and both um, trays trays are out with some dishes in it, it will start to tip out <laughs> of the of where it's supposed to be. So. Now I'm, I got to take the fucking dishwasher. I got to screw it to the wall. <laughs> a dishwasher is a little like me, a little front heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so now I just, instead of uh, instead of addressing the problem, because I just, I'll deal with that later, I just open one shelf at, at a time. time. Yeah. And I, I mean, just. That's human nature in a nutshell. Right especially there. at home for me. I'm just like, I'll deal with that later. Yeah. Or I'll call a guy. That's, hey, that's a, a future you, get, you problem. That's get your surround problem. sound figured out before that. That's more important. So I've done that either. You'll get to it. Um, so. Did you guys know with your microwaves, most models you can turn the beep off, and so the microwave just ends. And you don't get a beep. But, but I then like the beep. How will I know? The microwave stops working. How will I know when it's done? <laughs> it's just done making noise. No, but I, you know, it's one of those things that I think we think we hate the beeps of a microwave. I do think that if we didn't have them. It would we would hate it more. Well, I've turned the beeps off on mine, and I love it. <laughs> now, the beep that I would like to turn off is the one if you leave the food in there too long without opening the beep. the door up, it'll 
chirp at every you. minute or yeah. so. Yeah. I would like my microwave to have a clear the time left sooner or ever. So like Ann always leaves like fucking 12 seconds left on. Yeah. And then I go to look at the time and it says 12 seconds. <laughs> I go, well, I know it's not 12, 12 a.m. right now. <laughs> well, so she well. must have done that. And I have to walk over and plus clear off. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, 758. Sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't even see. But my it doesn't. Time, so. And it, it never just automatically clears. Yeah. I would like that. For, uh, the time I, I can't see it anymore. But it's one less <laughs> clock that I need to set back or bring forward. No, for what you gotta do is you just you, you can't. And when you're cooking stuff, no lights on in the house, so you can see the microwave. That's the, literally the only way. So, yeah. but also I'm I'm learning. Close like, the blinds, shut the lights off. I'm gonna microwave some pizza. <laughs> so if you can't see the time, you're punching in on your microwave either. Either right? No, I've gotten so good with no clock on there, no time, no nothing. I've gotten so good just hitting dials that it's I, I so you, you've out. never accidentally like added an extra zero to make one minute 10 minutes and then you just get lost on your phone no you if i second guess it. myself i'll i'll do the the blinders <laughs> thing straight up on the microwave <laughs> you should see it. i mean i'd love to be a fly on the wall when i'm doing that it's funny <laughs> what is he looking for <laughs> he's Fucking, really into those what pizza happens, rolls what happens basic. if a fly gets into the microwave Got water explodes. Probably. Would it? What I don't happens know. If a cat gets that seems <laughs> actually kind of fucked up. I mean, that's but like I how serial killers start. I know, but I don't not want to know what happens now, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that experiment. Yeah. But if I happen to come across a TikTok of someone trying that, wait, I wouldn't not watch it. Didn't that guy from the Don't Fuck with Cats documentary microwave a cat? Probably. Okay, well, that's just too far. Yeah. Far. It's no, I'm up, just saying, I think, I think that happened in that documentary, if I remember Probably. correctly. I mean, the, the fly would die, right? Of course. Oh, Probably. yeah. A lot of moisture in there. With, but it's funny that we feel bad about microwaving it, but we have no problem taking a newspaper and smashing <laughs> them into smoke. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's quicker. Yeah. They don't suffer. <laughs> nah, that's true. <laughs> Be interesting. Put like a... But then we'll hang up sticky tape and then just let them starve to death on the tape. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know what? No, let's microwave the fuck out of flies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Throw the sticky trap in the in the microwave. Yeah. yeah. Leave the door open. There yeah. might be moisture on the sticky trap, though. It'll get hot. <laughs> My, microwaves need self-cleaning buttons like ovens do. Yeah. Like when you self-clean or when you like need to clean your oven, it takes like five hours. It gets mm -hmm. like piping hot. And it smells microwaves weird. Microwaves need that. Yeah. Could just get one of those cover things. <laughs> that is true. I ain't putting that cover on. No, me either. I'm a paper towel. We have one of those. We yeah, I'm use a it for a week. Paper towel guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I always make the joke with my wife like, if something blows up in the microwave, I'll be like, fuck, I forgot the paper towel and my wife will lose it. <laughs> <laughs> even though I do That's have a great <laughs> Even though I do have it on there, I'll just be like, God damn it. No, I got to clean the microwave. No, I'm just kidding. I got the paper towel on. <laughs> I'd love to be a fly in the wall in the <laughs> household once in a while. No, you wouldn't. Oh, yeah, no, you get microwave. Damn it! <laughs> love to see all of Ryan's <laughs> tricks and haptics going on with this microwave. Again, this should be a regular segment. The amount yeah. of stuff Ryan does with his microwave. I think you're yeah. get, getting haptics and antics confused. Welcome to the party, Tyler. <laughs> it's interchangeable. They're interchangeable. You know who hap. Tix is. Yeah. Right? He's, <laughs> he's a good buddy of mine. Up Hap and, short for happy. Up and Adam's cousin. <laughs> happy happy, happy <laughs> tickles. <laughs> uh Jared, you got one before we wrap it up here? Uh yeah. I didn't know how to tie my shoes until I was like 10. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know how to wipe up. my own ass until 25. <laughs> Time out. You knew about the percentage of rain and all that stuff when you were three, but you couldn't tie your shoes till you were ten. Couldn't figure it. I, I was like, you were a Velcro kid. Yeah, I was about to say that. I, I was rocking. till what age? It's like nine or ten, somewhere around there. Yeah. It was like watch, third grade. You ever watch that SpongeBob episode where they teach you how to do it? Mm -hmm. Or like Big Daddy was like, you swoop it, you loop it, and you pull. Like I yep. never, I never got that concept. So I don't. You know, we love your mom here on this podcast. <laughs> we do. But I don't not want to point out that was she an enabler for you or or, or what? How, time for you. Why did, if I didn't know how to tie my shoes, my mom would just be like, sit down. You're not getting up until you can tie your shoes. 
I don't I don't know. She just kept buying Velcro shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I honestly don't know. I would love to know the psychology behind that. Mm-hmm. Maybe a better person, I think. You know. Did it? I don't know. <laughs> Joe loves Velcro. Yeah. There was always a, handy. there was I all- would love for I texted my mom, I would love for you to text your mom and say, Why didn't you make me learn how to tie shoes earlier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, do you guys remember those shoelaces that were like kind of coiled yep. and then you would just yep. wind them together and your shoes were tied? Yep. I was everyone I saw just like had them just sticking out the side. They never even tied them together. Well, I, I, used, I used to tie the uh, tie a knot like on the very end so oh, that yeah. they wouldn't pop mm-hmm. through. God, mm-hmm. that was sick. Did you guys? There ha- was a phase in. Well, I still kind of do this. I don't tie my shoes ever, but there was a phase like where it was cool in middle school to have your shoes untied. Correct? Yeah, it was the big bulky skate shoes. Yes. Yep. Yep. That needs. I mean, gym mm-hmm. class. Kickball gym class in those <laughs> years shoes was an year. absolute hazard. <laughs> war zone. It was a war zone. Every single kid would have to call time when they got on first base to go pick up their shoe. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you'd have to like you're running, you're yeah. playing kickball, you're running from first to second, and the fucking clotting noise of your shoes hitting your heel yep. too. Or if you kicked, shoe flies off in the rafters, but you still want to be you. You got a double coming. But it was your right foot, and you're trying to round first in a sock on a gym floor, and you're just slipping and sliding. You're like Tyler's truck right now, taking a hard left turn, splishy and splashy around first base. Kid's socks, there's like three inches of loose sock above his toes. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even all. Okay. Honestly, though, there's two different types of people in this world. There's people who have tight socks. And there's people who have loose socks <laughs> yeah. with the front end and the toes just all floppy. If you're a loose sock person, don't talk to me. Yeah, uh, or your name is Dylan. Yeah, <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> or there's just a classic kid where his, his shoes are tied tight, but his they're not tied. They're cinched tight, but the laces are just flopping all <laughs> over the place. He's stepping on them. Or there's the kid who walks on his jeans and he's got like the rip marks underneath his on jeans the back of his heel. underneath of his feet. Yeah, at it's all like times. it's like because they're probably hammy down jeans. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it's just like maybe just roll them up on the bottom yeah. or something. Yeah, cuff them at the bottom. I got a pair of jeans like that that they they hang under my shoes if unless I'm wearing boots. You're, I hate to bring it to you, Tyler, but those those jeans are too long for you. I'm I'm aware, yeah. Miles. <laughs> You gotta get them hemmed. Yeah. yeah. Bring them in, get them hemmed. You got a hem yeah. guy? Good gal? I got a carpet cleaner, so Lord knows she probably got a hem set. You got a hemp, I got a hemp guy. Ew. Oh, do ya? No. C- CBD. <laughs> uh, yeah. Gym class. There were so many. The shoes get out, and the, the gym teacher would be like, <sighs> all right, I'll have the janitor get the scissor lift to get it down for you. Scissor <laughs> lift. <laughs> yeah, I, and then he, he's so sick of it. He just makes you play one shoe for the rest of the day. Yeah, you have to go to the lost class. and found and try and find a shoe that fits. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, hey, if the shoe fits. Oh, you got the Dylan who's kicking. That was good, Ryan. You get the the Dylan that just kicks his shoe off to be a Dylan. <laughs> yeah, it's not he, even on accident. He solely does it to just kick his shoe off. Well, it's, it's mm-hmm. a diversion too. It's like, where's the ball at? Because I had a shoe flying at me. Yeah, you got the Dylan there, and then you got the Kevin trying to catch the shoe instead of the ball. Yeah. Does, does anyone remember about the skateboarding shoes, how thick the tongues were? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there a rhyme or reason to why skateboarding shoes have such thick tongues? So it's fucking sick. But is there like a padding element to it? Is it why? Why? They should have had them for like Razor scooters to like, like soften the blow if you get hit. And- yeah, we should have had ankle. They should have had like... Uh, Full like combat boots. Yeah, Jordan for, pumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan pumps for razor scootering back in the day. Pre- protect your ankles. <laughs> yeah, the, the the thick tongs were where they were something else. So, and weird. then they had like a humped like kind of where your your toe bones are at. They had like a hump, like a big hump for what? I don't know. It was weird. It's a weird time. They're gonna come back though. That's the problem. With yeah, fashion everything comes back at yep. some point. Kids will be wearing thick ass, loose ass I got skateboarding a, shoes. I got a guys. pair of neon green Osiruses somewhere. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You should bring them in. You yeah, I should. Your fat farms? No. No, I'm long gone. Okay. All right. Well, some of the stuff was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But 
you know, big ups to us for being able to admit that. Open and vulnerable. The microwave is embarrassing. I'll tell you that. It is? Yeah. Well, the, the stuff the that you sh- do yeah, the with your microwave. With the microwave. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant like the heating up all the water. The, I'm like, I learned of, that today. All oh, yeah. the haptics that you have with God your damn it. microwave are <laughs> absurd. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. But uh, yeah, we're going to take a break and keep the thing rolling. Ryan, go on. Wear my Mossberg hat today. You see that? I saw that. I How can see, you see it? It's I camo. Yeah. I can see the lettering. Lettering is not. The, oh, the letter. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. you're right. The lettering is green. Um, But honestly, for a gun company, they got some pretty fire merch. They do, yeah. That's so, cool. That camel's coming back, too. It is. I like it. Um, it makes me very mysterious. They're like, wow, where's the top of his head? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he wearing that, mesh on the back of his head? Is, is that guy walking around without the top of his head? <laughs> yeah. I get that a lot when I'm wearing my Mossberg hat, and they got that at Mossberg.com. <laughs> Ryan, what are we doing this weekend? Pew, 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 we are going Guns. to the gun range. Yes, we are. And we're going to fire off some Mossbergs. And tell you what, I'm going to strut into that place like a cocky mother trucker. <laughs> because I know I'm walking in with the straightest barrel of anyone in that place. You're going to make them jealous. I'm going to make them peanut butter and jealous is what mm-hmm. I'm going to do. And I'm going to be eating a peanut butter and jealous sandwich. Too at the range. I might try and curve a bullet with my. my <laughs> yeah. <nose meter. laughs> what is that from again? Uh, Wanted. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. You can. You can curve a bullet with a straight barrel. I can tell you that much. <laughs> if I've learned anything about life. I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think you could curve a bullet with a curved barrel? You can't. You need a straight barrel to curve a bullet. Yeah, they'll just blow the barrel out. Yeah. Thank curved. you. You just took the words right out of my mouth, Tyler. So we're finally doing it. We're finally having our gun range day. This Saturday, we're gonna see who's uh, who's hot. Who's got the hot barrel? One hole. <laughs> I'm in one hole. Just bullets middle straight finger. through the same hole. You do a middle finger, and I'm yep. doing a what? Smiley face. Yep. Yep. With his we'll, tongue sticking out. Yeah, we'll get it done. Yeah, like the yep. Jared's gonna write Mossberg.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pew, 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 pew. Double yeah. clip it. Probably have to get that done. And yeah. then after that, I'll do the YB logo. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Easy. No problem for any of us. Yeah. Um, and this whole time, and while I'm doing it, I'll be eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> because everyone else is peanut butter and jealous of us at the range. And if you want people to be peanut butter and jealous of you at the range, got to go to Mossberg.com. All right, guys, we're back. You know, I actually brought up baby boomers in the last one. What, what did I say again? Do you remember? Mm, no. Where were you saying it? I did Baby too. I can't boomers. Remember oh, the weather. They had no idea. The weather <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They didn't have TikTok growing up, but that actually <laughs> kind of segues into our next segment, mm-hmm. which is what, Jared? Uh, what will die with the baby boom generation? Okay, I'm just going to get one out of the way that's very personal to me, and maybe you guys can relate. I'm going to pull up what my list was. Um, So this one, something that's going to die with the baby boomers is the word sack. <laughs> In the sense that we would never call a bag a sack. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought okay. you meant like hit the sack. No, that like too. Going to bed. I thought you meant but like my, my sack itches. My, <laughs> I know that's what you thought, Ryan. But my grandma would be like, "Oh, you taking the leftovers? Let me grab you a sack real quick." <laughs> <laughs> I just, I would never. We know what a sack is. We would never ever call a bag a sack. Oh no. yeah, you want a sack lunch? You got a sack lunch. Here's That's a, a bag lunch. Mm-hmm. Here's a knapsack for you. Yeah. Using the word sack as a form of a compartment to store things is on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. I think it's evolving. But now that I know this, you know, I appreciate a little more when she's like, hey, you need a sack? I go, absolutely, even though I don't need one. <laughs> you ever been That's tapped? what it's all about. You've been tapped on the sack? <laughs> That's not what it's not what we're talking about. No, I would agree. Any other words that you can think of that are gonna be that are out with the baby boomers? Sack's a good one. Uh golly G. Yeah. G G golly dang G, it. Dang it. Um maybe uh, uh Jeepers. 
Jeepers, mister. You know, stuff like that. You think Joe, in re- reference to coffee, no. No. is a baby boomer thing? No. You don't? There's like coffee brands that still call it Joe. And I, there's, I've seen on coffee things that like, this is a cup of Joe. Gotcha. Yeah. Who is Joe? He's up there with... <laughs> You mean, are you out. talking about Kappa? Oh, yeah, Kappa. <laughs> Kappa Joe. Kappa Joe. Oh, <laughs> that's, we found it. We found it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was just my personal one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys, if you heard old people say sack before yeah. instead of bag. Yeah, yep. multiple times. There's just no way. Um, the other one that I have that's real. Um, something that's going to die with the baby boomers is... Overly describing people's <laughs> looks when they're telling a story. Ah, he was a tall guy. That you know, I think he had yeah some some sandy blonde hair, <laughs> and you know I think he went yeah he grew up in Davenport, and uh, it's just like over describing right. <laughs> and I think the reason why they had to do that is there was no way to show the other person yep. or give the other person any backstory when they grew up when they lived right now she's like oh yeah this is me and, me and my buddy dave you know, yeah, you know like, i don't yeah, have to tell him like yep. he, she can they can look and go wow dave's a tall guy yep. yeah you don't have to describe dave like yeah yeah you know dave yeah this this fucking guy and you show him a picture and then you continue oh, on your story yeah. about dave well there's a lot of like you know maybe if i saw him i know him and then you mm-hmm. can actually can do it but the guy just has back in the day they, if the guy describe said him. maybe if i saw him i knew him he'd be like okay well, he's a tall guy, you know, he's, you know, he's huskier, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, my grandpa Al loves to, at the end of a very long story, say, yeah, well, to make a long story short, yeah, like, the story was already short. fucking long, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Um, on top of that, also, when telling stories, they'll just start throwing names out that you have no idea <laughs> yeah. who they are, but they just assume that you know who... Yeah. Betty, Betty down the street is. Oh, yeah. Or Bill or Jorgensen. Like a, you know Bill. Like their second cousin, which you've never met or never even heard of before. They reference them in, in like their by first name, and you have no idea who they are. <laughs> and you just nod, like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's either they give you no detail or they give you way too many. Yep. <laughs> yep, right. There's no middle ground. It's no. either just Bill, and you're like, okay, I'm going to assume that Bill is your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's you tell. Like Bill's social security number yeah. in this story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that baby's getting leaked. Yeah. That's, uh, I think, something that I think it's a lost art because now we have access to everyone's information at all times. We don't need to tell everyone. Like, there's it. times we'll tell each other stories where I'll literally just hand you my phone and it's a text conversation. And it tells the story itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Storytelling. That's yeah. another good one. Um, something that's going to get lost with the baby boomer generation, I feel like, is aftershave. Yeah, I was actually thinking gone. about that the other day. I'm like, I'm turning 30 here soon, and maybe I gotta start like, maybe I gotta throw up my my electric shaver and get start shaving with a real thing. And then I was like, Nope. Oh, well, now I'm gonna have to get aftershave and yep. the whole thing. I, I is that to, just to prevent like the burn, like burning yeah, of a straight like, razor? See, see my razor burn I got. Yep. If I had to use aftershave, I don't think that would have been there. Gotcha. So I used to shave my face every single day for the news, and I never used aftershave once. Your skin didn't get dry or anything? Uh-uh. Hmm. I mean, I would just put lotion on it if it did. Well, that's because he's the GB. The what? He's the GB. The grease ball. Oh. oh I thought you were... Skin doesn't dry out. <laughs> like, there's two bottles of aftershave right above Ryan's head, so you should I know. You I have one in my one office. I do, uh, he does straight blade me after my, my barber. Well, hold on. Time out. <laughs> what is aftershave for? After you shave. Isn't it just supposed to take away the burn? That's and what I thought. No, it makes, it burns. No, it doesn't. For a sec, and then it's better, right? Yeah, you remember Home Alone? He my, puts my the aftershave bar- on and he freaks out. My barber puts aftershave uh, on me after he does my neck. I'm going to be honest. It- I'm going to backpedal. I don't think any of us know what aftershave does. <laughs> Can we look it up, Jared? If we had a baby boomer here, they'd be able to tell us in a I'm going to be second. honest. I thought it was just because it smelled good. <laughs> that, that, so did I. Got like, like a type of cologne, honestly. I think I'm wrong. I think I was wrong about the razor burn. Uh, 
Alcohol based. So what does aftershave do? Aftershaves are designed to reduce the irritation, razor burn, and bumps caused ah. by shaving. They do this by clearing your pores of any bacteria that may be present post-shave mm. on your skin. Sealing up the pores to prevent the entry. So I was right. Fuck, I gotta start washing my face with aftershave. Get them pores cleaned out. The problem is, it's seal just, them up. It's oh, so fuck. It's so ah, pungent. <laughs> is like, aftershave? Is it, is it, well, it I could think be there's tear-free. modern yeah. aftershaves now. Yeah, I mean, like I've gotten in you know, like a shaving kit, like some post-shaving lotion you're supposed to use. I never used that stuff, but I, I can check it out for you guys. Please yeah. do. Yeah, I, I, I don't know because I don't. I shave like once every six months, and so. I, I imagine it burns right away because it's it's like when you have a cut and you put in the like alcohol swab mm. or whatever and it burns right away oh, God, yeah. then it's better because it's cleaning the wound it's basically like you're cleaning the wound well either way it's dying i'm with you ryan i think it's gone but yeah i don't know i think it sounds like a good deal i, really, I just i don't think people are educated enough on it no yeah. i'd rather do moisturizer like lotion than aftershave because my skin gets really dry after i do a straight razor that's another thing is the like l- the one blade razor that the yeah. barber does. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are another nice. Thing that's dying. <laughs> you got another one? Uh, yeah, something that so that's totally gonna die with the boomers is top sheets. Yeah, I, I don't know a single person from the ages eighteen to forty that has a top sheet anymore. I used to have a top sheet because my baby boomer dad. And my close to baby boomer mother taught me that top sheets are good for you. How? Then I got out of the house and then I started dating Ann and we don't have a top sheet. Now, are you talking a comforter? No. Like, no. you know, like you have. The he rest. doesn't even know what a top sheet is. Yeah. So it's going to die. You know, like it's they literally have going to die. Like a fitted sheet. Right. And then the top sheet is the thin sheet that's just loose that lays under your comforter. Right. I cover up with that. Do you have a top sheet? Yeah. I got a top sheet. Well, you are in the really? minority, my friend. I, I think so. Jared, top sheet or no? I don't think so. I got fitted sheet, top sheet, and then this like wool blanket deal, and then the comforter, and yeah, then a duvet you, at the end. Yeah. You're... And then 19 pillows. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to relax at my bed? You can. So That's when you the were starting lineup. <laughs> yeah. So when you were single. Starting guy... at guard, <laughs> the wool, weird, <laughs> kind of too small blanket between the top sheet and the comforter. It, it's literally, it is too small. Like it's not too small, but it hangs off like four inches. Yeah. Um, Anne does this thing while we're laying in bed is she'll bunch up the, the comforter by her face. Cause she's like, Oh my God, it just like makes me feel like I'm tucked in. But then <laughs> she pulls it up too high and my feet pop up <laughs> That's the worst. and I get pissed. And then yeah. what I have to do is I have to wrap it around my foot and hold it there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when she moves, it doesn't just pop off my feet again. Yeah. I've, I think I've told you guys this on this podcast before. Becca and I are a separate blanket couple. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's odd. Yeah. It's so much nicer though. I don't get my cover stolen ever anymore. I just feel disconnected. Well, then you just pop one foot out and like touch her foot to let her know, like, you guys are still in bed together. <laughs> and then you scurry back underneath the blanket. Yep. You're like, hey, hey, I'm, so, I'm still here. It's like a little mouse going to get some cheese. <laughs> 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 also, okay. Something that's dying with baby boomers are holes in your wall for rats and mice, like in all those <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> You know like what I Tom mean? And Jerry. Like, like Tom and Jerry, how they had like a hole in the wall yeah. that was perfectly like a door. Yeah. Well, like, what the fuck is that about? I've like, never seen that in my life. Why would you ever want that? I grew up in the country and we had a plenty of mice in our home. There was not a single fucking hole in the wall like that. No. And we eat, we had the mice to make the holes. Yeah. It's like a perfect. Where hole are they getting in at? Did I like mean, Tom and Jerry invent that? Because I don't think I've ever seen a mouse hole in a wall. Do you? Well, Google it, Jared. We got to figure out why is there a hole in the wall on Tom and Jerry, and it might just been for the cartoon. Um, well, yeah. Just a quick one. Another thing that's going to die with the Boomer generation are my grandparents, probably. Um, I just had to keep them on their toes. Tyler. They're listening close. I love you, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> Tyler is dark, but you're not wrong. Yep. You are not. I mean, we're all going to die. Wrong. I'll get yep. to that, Jared, in a sec. Um, you know, I think something that might die is the old cat and mouse game <laughs> that you see on Tom and Jerry. 
That was bad. <laughs> we'll find it. <laughs> the, okay. Where where did cartoon mouse holes come from? However, the existence of neat arch shaped holes in baseboards is they're often cut for plumbing installations, especially heating pipes, and are often wide enough that mice do crawl through them. So the mice the aren't making picture. those holes. It was plumbing back yeah, in the day. It was a plumber. Mouse holes are typically not recognized by homeowners until they discover other signs of infestation. Mice determination shouldn't be underestimated. <laughs> they can climb, jump, and burrow. Joe. They can also swim. Nearly <laughs> any place <laughs> they choose, include inside the wall cavity. Chimneys and roof vents are ideal pathways for rodents, too. That didn't tell me anything about. Well, they, they say yeah, the holes weren't made yeah, by the plumbing. mice. There was the plumbing back in the day. Yeah, that, so plumbing that pipes. Mice would just go in and out of them. Okay. And it's kind of a trope. It's kind of a, uh, the classic trope. What does trope mean? Can we Google that? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't know what it means, but I'm guessing there's <laughs> listeners who don't know. What it means. <laughs> trope. A figurative or metaphorical use of a word or expression. Like haptics. <laughs> Talking about a tar. Okay. Yeah, the trope of the it does not real. We we discovered a new trope in television. Mm-hmm. That trope is dying with baby boomers. Mm-hmm. Look to make a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, we had a cat. He was uh, kind of a, a chunkier cat. We fed <laughs> that thing too much. Um his <sighs> coat was gray, but it had little white spots and uh you know, it was kind of a feisty cat. <laughs> yeah, early in life, we used to feed him meow mix. <laughs> and uh, then we, and it, it just goes on and on about how chunky he is. Okay, yeah, no, white point? paws. I think we uh, called him uh, socks. Yeah, socks. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he was a good cat, liked to purr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cuddly little guy. Yeah, you know, once in a while, he'd just sit up on the couch and just stare out the window. <laughs> I, I, but But only on sunny days. <laughs> It was, it was a sunny day. Yeah, he was, he was sunning himself. He was a sun cat. Yeah. There was a 35% chance of rain that day. It didn't rain at all. The weatherman was fucking wet. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weatherman. I don't, that's, that's why I don't listen to the weatherman. I only listen to my creaky knee and my cat. <laughs> That'll tell me if it's going to rain or not. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to. They will die with a personal vendetta against all weathermen. <laughs> weathermen are just sitting here waiting for the boomers to yeah. die so they can have finally be at peace. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I got another one. I feel like something that's gonna die with the baby boomers are wood fireplaces. Mm. Because I, I, I think those are making a comeback, to be honest. So I think what's wood, kind of- I think wood stoves are making a comeback. That's more for like personal leisure use, so like ice houses. Uh, little cabins, whatever. Well, so what's strange, I think, about wood fires in homes is they started where everyone, that was the only way, right, mm-hmm. that they could do it. Then as time went on and electricity, electricity and, like, furnaces and stuff were invented, the people with more money transitioned out of a wood fire mm-hmm. thing into something that would just heat the home where you didn't have to do the wood fire thing. Sure. And probably families that didn't have as much money had those. Now everyone has the furnace. Everyone has the, you know, elect, you know, electric baseboard heat, all yep. that stuff. Yep. And I feel like rich families are going back to installing real fireplaces in their home because it's just so much more cozy. Yeah. They- They're probably not using them though. That's the thing. I mean, no rich dad is going to be out hacking wood and filling, you know, buying the wood at the store. So, like, my dad has a wood stove in the house, and the house he built it but like that's different. Yeah, but it's like the it's all he goes and cuts the wood, he stacks it or whatever, and it all well, I used to do. So it. did my dad, yeah. Um, but then it, it it heats the house through like heating vents. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but so not like, like a fireplace. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what I mean. Is it's like the fireplace is more of like a wealthier family type of thing, mm-hmm. a heated stove, whatever. I don't know. I feel like it's like we've kind of gone full circle where everyone used to heat their home with wood fire. Mm-hmm. And now it's like people who are rich just put in a real fireplace because they can. My neighbors growing up 
had the worst system. They were, it was all wood heat, but the place where you burned the wood was in a shed outside of the house. So if it got cold at like one o'clock in the morning, they had to go out to the woodshed and throw in a few more logs. That was it was twenty five yards away. It could be negative twenty. My nice, my grandpa no chance yep. of burning down your house. Though. Yeah, my grandpa's got wood heat. He's got an earth home, mm-hmm. so it's like you can only see the front. The like the top and the back is covered in dirt and grass. No and, uh, way. Swear, I swear. Shut the fuck up. I Grandpa swear. isn't Frank Lloyd Wright. I swear <laughs> on my life. This is where the does he live that he has an earth home in the middle of nowhere? Where though, like North Dakota? Yeah, North Dakota. Yes. No yes. way. I dude. swear, dude. Cool. I'll, I'll take a photo. Fo- I'll show you no, a photo. It's, it's like Frodo cool. Baggins. It would be cool if it was true. It, it is. is just, I'll show you a picture. Show there's you a picture. just no chance. <laughs> his his like. His, He's got wood heat as well, an industrial wood burner, whatever the fuck you'd call it, is outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So he has to go out, fill it, and then go back in. Your dad lives in Frodo's house? That is kind of No, tight. my grandpa. Or your grandpa, I mean? I'll show I'll find a picture and I will show you. Find that photo. Right I'm still shell shocked at that. I think that's fucking sweet. No, it's cool, but there's just no way you know someone that has one of those. Hundred percent. I feel like they're very rare. So, like, everything's covered but the front of the house? Correct. The yeah. sides, the top, the back, it's all covered in dirt and grass. He's got to save so much money what on his heating yeah. bill. But it's got to be so warm in there. But what about the fire code? Yeah, so Disney has, like, no windows then, huh? Just Except on the, the front. front. Well, he's got some windows punched out, like, uh, like on the sides. Of the hill? Yeah. It's like a Hogan. Sounds starting to sound a little fishy. You guys keep going. I'll find it. Okay. Uh, I got one more. Radio will die with the boomers. Well, what radio is just now podcasting. Right. But the, the radio is still a thing. People listen to it for live sports. I'll listen to it if I'm on the road. But I can get it on my phone. That is true. Radio is done. And I was I love radio. Video killed the radio star. Yeah, MTV mm-hmm. killed it. Yep. Yeah, they did. <laughs> um, something that's going to die with the boomers is milk delivery. I think that's done. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because, well, okay. The thing is going to die with boomers is milk in general. No one's drinking milk anymore. I drink a lot of milk. I don't you drink, are, I don't drink, you I, are a yeah. very boomer esque yeah, millennial. I knew it as soon as I said it, but I, I drink quite a bit of milk. But here's the thing got milk? Nope. <laughs> yeah, that shit the bad. <laughs> that backfired long term. <laughs> It's great at the time, right? Yeah, I only drink milk if I'm eating Oreos or having cereal. Yeah, that's literally that's it. That's literally it. Mm-hmm. Like I never crave a glass of milk ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we should do a podcast where we just have to drink milk the whole time. <laughs> oh, God, I get sick. Of it. This is milk mustache. <laughs> I, I call it chocolate milk. What? I want chocolate milk. No, I get. You it. can have Nesquik. Nesquik. Uh, I've br- we brought Nesquik back in our house. We have Nesquik now for Charlie. Because like before, it was chocolate syrup and milk. That gets expensive. No, just wait until he discovers Swiss Miss. Oh, he's had it. He's had it. Swiss Miss is elite. I mean, you just can't go to fucking Nesquik. (laughs) If you're feeding your kid Nesquik and he's had the sweet, delicious nectar taste of Swiss Miss, you're just disappointing him every day. He doesn't know yet. He'll he'll know eventually, but I'm going to... No pun intended. Milk this Nesquik thing <laughs> for as long as possible. <laughs> I can't believe that you've allowed him to have Swiss Miss and you're still feeding him Nesquik. That's yeah, cruel. I can't keep buying him Swiss Miss. That's it's double the price of regular milk. Oh my! I do like God. Nesquik. Yeah, Nesquik, Nesquik is, is underrated. Yeah. I don't know. Do a dry scoop of it. I don't. Dry, <laughs> I'm not dry scooping Nesquik. <laughs> Why is that fucking rabbit is nostalgic? Yeah. Kind yeah. of like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Muscle Manos. Yeah. That's Spanish for more or less. So, more or less so so. Mm-hmm. Um you guys Jared, you got one? Yeah, I think like the exception of a handful of shows, I think like network TV shows are gonna die with boomers. So it's like I was watching football and like Jim Nance is like, tune in to to the FBI's, you know, <laughs> Monday nights at seven. Yeah, like, like, who's watching this? The rookie. Yeah, uh, like, NYPD, the rookie. And it's, it's like, yeah, it's like a CSI remake. It over feels, and over again. well, it feels, you know what? TV shows now that we have like YouTube and 
HBO shows. Mm -hmm. We've had that for a while, but like now that all that style is mainstream, all TV shows just feel like if SNL made a comedy skit about network TV, (laughs) that's how it would be. But that's actually how network TV is. I like the, it's funny you bring that up because my grandma fucking loves network television. It's so weird. And she like, I, I want to be able to talk to her about it because I love talking movies and I love talking shows. You guys know this about me, but I can't. It's like grandma will tell me what's happening in fucking Chicago Fire Department TV <laughs> Chicago show. Chicago Fire. And then yeah. Chicago Fire does a does a collab with NYPD. And it's like the craziest <laughs> episode. And I'm like, Grandma, I love you. I can't listen to this conversation because it's such Bad writing, bad television, mm. bad acting. Just like The Bachelor, Bachelorette. Yeah, I'm yeah. over that as well too. It, I used it's to be like a big these fan. are the lines you see. So if it's Chicago Fire Department show, it's like a uh, water treatment plants on fire, <laughs> and then the main character, main character, right before commercial break, looks at someone and goes. Looks like we're in hot water. <laughs> yeah. And then it's commercial, commercial break. break. And then it's like whopper, 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 whopper. <laughs> that's Triple all goes. double junior just, whopper. Oh, just yeah. over and over and over. And then they resolve it at the end. Yeah. That's how everyone ends. Yeah. <laughs> well, they remember that. Well, then it's like, looks like this pot of boiling water is cooled off. <laughs> it's like that's the last line. And then it's whopper, 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 whopper. Well, like NCIS used to do that at the beginning of every episode. The one dude would say something dramatic, and then the theme song would come in. Yeah. It would oh, like, look think- like this pot's about to boil over. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 CSI. Yeah, 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 okay. CSI. Yeah. Don't talk shit about CSI Miami too hard, though. <laughs> well, CS- that's like the last era of the good network television. Yeah. Like CSI now sucks balls. It used to be really? good. <laughs> they can air that on network television. <laughs> I guarantee you. No, that, that's nip talk you're thinking about, Tyler. <laughs> there's probably an episode of CIS where somebody choked on like a ball and he's like, that must have sucked balls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Shoe horn that in. Whatever. Choke on a ball. <laughs> so I was just at home eating balls and I choked on one. They they run out of material eventually. Yeah. They did all the good shit. Some serial killers like just shoving bouncy balls down people's throats. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be your line earlier. Would be great line for this. It'd be a guy who is delivering milk, and someone stabbed him a bunch of times. Looks like the person who stabbed him really milked it. Wow! <laughs> well, it's the song by the Who, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it looks like you took a stab at that one. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I wonder who murdered this guy. I'll go ahead and take a stab at it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> That's like all of OJ Simpson's Twitter replies or stuff like <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hello, Twitter world. <laughs> OJ yeah, Holmes, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you took a stab at this. Yeah. Or you really killed that video. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Pretty dark. You're a good guy no matter how you slice it. Sure <laughs> <Yeah. like that>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, you know what though, the baby boomers. Without the baby boomers, we aren't here today. So, hats off to them. Sure. Sounds like they're like literally dying off. <laughs> what are Some they? Of they're in their seventy-five. Yeah, six. Yeah, uh, yeah mid sixties, seventies. Yeah, I'm sure they're listening. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're watching CSI Miami right now. <laughs> Dexter was like the transition from like those shows into like HBO stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Even that was on stars. Was it? Yeah. You couldn't even watch it on network TV. I'm not sure. I I think it was on network TV. I thought it was. It was. Hmm. And then it went on Netflix or whatever stars. Okay. Yeah. There's no way to find out. (laughs) 
<laughs> try to think of something clever to say. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I'm really trying to find this song over here. I'm sorry, guys. What, the Whopper Jr. song? No, the <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Just type in CSI Miami intro song. Yeah, but apparently there's a bunch. They've gone through different ones. <laughs> oh. so, well, the era, the guy who always wore, he was like blonde hair and had the dark glasses and wore a suit. Kind of not husky, though. Yeah, I would say he was a he was he was a short guy. <laughs> you know, he actually lived down in Miami. You know, not you know, not all the time do they shoot those shows where it gets shot, but that one was shot in Miami. I think I read in the newspaper. Um, and you know that guy. He, although he was kind of famous and and pretty wealthy, he was he was pretty frugal with his money. <laughs> you know, he didn't buy a huge house. We actually drove by it when we were down in Fort Lauderdale on vacation last year. <laughs> it's a it's a modest home. It's nice. You know, if someone handed me the keys, I wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> You're too good at that. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God, dude. Buckle in. Buckle in. We're in for a long ride here. Uh, so, guys, uh, rise and shine. It's morning, uh, Ryan. <laughs> Hello. How do you start your morning with wood? <laughs> I nope. usually like to make my morning with a delicious breakfast. Do you? Yeah. Well, that's great because Holiday right now <laughs> has a morning's made thing going on. Tyler, you're supposed wow. to be on your top. Th you're supposed to be on your 31 days uh, of holiday breakfast. Aren't you? You, know what, you know what I just learned? They have new breakfast. Hold on. Those. Hold on. Let me get there. <laughs> You're supposed to be doing that, right? Yeah, I am. And when you do, because I know you're not doing every it every morning. day. <laughs> when you do, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Every morning, I would do Would you it. say that your morning is made? I would you say do? that. Yeah. I would. Did you go there this morning? I did. Did you, Was your morning made? It was. Fresh donuts. <laughs> if you guys want your mornings to be made, you got to go to holiday gas mm -hmm. stations. Tyler, what have you been buying? I said I had donuts this morning. Bought some for me and my kids, so all of our mornings were made. Oh God! Good Dad of the Week yep. award goes to Tyler for more, making his kids' morning made. Last Monday of the week, I had to make <laughs> yeah, it for him. Making the most of it. Yep. Got a case of the uh, the 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 morning made Mondays today. <laughs> I had the mornings made Monday munchies because I got yeah. some donuts. They got breakfast quesadillas, dude. <laughs> I haven't seen the breakfast quesadilla yet. So I'm really looking forward no, to it. No, I haven't either. That sounds absolutely peanut butter and delicious. <laughs> they also have cookies. So if you want a nice morning dessert, <laughs> then uh, you're going to want to go to holiday, get your morning made. So just let's follow the neon bluebie and uh, <laughs> don't pass gas. Turn on in. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I think this is good. Yeah, I, think I did. I did find the Earth home. Did you? Can I? I, see I, it? I couldn't get on Street View, but okay. So that right there is the house. Okay, let me take a look at this. Okay, the addition next that the addition is next to it. That's not part of the Earth home. The house in the back is the old house that could fall down at any second. How many fucking homes does your G Pa have? He's, he's an addition guy. He he's absolutely it. flush. <laughs> With homes yeah. on this property. Peepaw's doing well. The old house is storage. That's just storage. Yeah, he's got a nice little swamp in the back. Yep. I uh -huh. would have liked to have a few more trees, though. But, I mean, it's like kind of built into the earth. It is. That does okay. not do it just. No, I know. That doesn't that do it. That clearly is above the ground. Well, there he, he, he dug a hole in the back for if this, whatever reason. I know. But if this, probably to be up to fire code. I don't know what fire code is with earth homes, but it, I mean, it, it, you're kind of right. The one side is completely built into the earth, but then the rest of it. I'll, if I can get a, man, if I get a straight on it. photo, you'll, yeah, That's you'll believe Spanish me. for so, so you'll believe me more or less. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it was another good episode. Um, check out our Patreon. Got to figure out a 2000 patron thing. We're mm -hmm. getting to it. We're getting to it. I'm getting too old for this shit. 
Uh, go to patreon.com slash you betcha radio. And uh, you got to listen to our hangover tips from last week. So mm. valuable. Very valuable info. So, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode. May your network TV be cheesy. And your dinner have a cold glass of milk. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. Ryan. I think we killed that episode. <laughs> 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 oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Whopper, whopper, whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Triple, double, junior, whopper.